Hello my beautiful internet friends. I'm very excited for today's video because I actually get to bring in some real professionals. I just arrived in Denver and I'm here to meet with Zach Harvey, my prosthetist, and a Paralympian to talk about the direct socket, which is the new kind of socket that I have. A lot of you guys ask questions about it. It's a very different process than more traditional sockets. I had a lot of questions, a lot of you guys had questions, like who is it good for and can above knee amputees use the direct sockets and what are pros and cons and so we're gonna tackle those today with Zach and Noah. sitting here to chat with me today about the direct socket. I know you guys were really, really interested in that and curious about what that balloon thing was and why the socket was being made directly on me and who it could work for and how it actually is working. And so I thought who better to answer those questions than the man himself. So Zach, thanks for chatting with us yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having me. What, what about it do you like? Like what excites you about the direct socket? I think to understand what it means and what it is, you have to first understand the mold making process that okay. we traditionally use um, and as you know first legs we made we had it was pretty labor intensive and it took a lot of steps and a lot yeah. of appointments we had to cast your leg we had to do a check socket you came back for follow-up maybe another check socket yeah we had to pour that up convert that to a carbon fiber socket this method is a lot different in the sense that the laminated socket is done on the person. It was same day for me. Like I came in and I got it out and I mean you guys kind of made a work of art in the back and I had a socket and we were good to go. Yeah, that it's same? a longer appointment yeah. but the yeah. idea is that we knock out all the work in one visit. Yeah. And then we have more time to do things like experiment with different things. Saving everyone time but it's also I think more importantly the accuracy of fit with this is really good. It's yeah. taking a fluid, a fluid dynamics approach to the fitting and I'll explain that in a minute, yeah, please. compared to a pressure distribution uh, approach. Traditionally, we look at loading the soft tissue areas maybe with a little bit more pressure than we do the bony prominences. Where this is compressing everything equally from all sides. One of the, the biggest questions I had was, like, who, who is it good for? You know, would it work for me? Or, I mean, who is it good for? Yeah, so right now it's available uh, through us for below knee and above knee amputees yeah. only. Yeah, okay. Um, the above knee system works a little bit different. It's not pressurized. Um, it has a silicone brim that's flexible that flips up over the socket when you put the leg on. Okay. And that contains all the soft tissue. A lot of above knee amputees complain they can put their hand down in their socket. Yeah, got it. With this, it's nice and tight and, and supportive around the upper section, but it's flexible, so it's more comfortable. And that, okay. that band of silicone provides a second means of suspension. So they might have a CLN liner primarily to hold on, but then they have this brim that's not only supportive, but it's an extra form of suspension. How long has this been around for? So it was developed in the Scandinavian countries. Okay. It's been in practice there in Sweden in particular uh, for, for well, one iteration or another for 15 years or so okay. um, with the uh, transtibial. Okay. And it seems like a pretty new thing over here. Yeah, in the U.S. it's, it's definitely new. Um, a lot of processes have Prosthetists have been familiar with the older form of the transtibial direct socket where we had a, a bladder that we go over and pressurize, but we're still doing the traditional like plaster cast. Oh, right, okay. So we arrived at that fit, but we used more traditional. Um, but right now it's uh, ready for prime time, I feel like. Yeah. The, the materials, the, the look of it is really good. It's um, there's not problems with leaks like there were in the earlier versions. Yeah. Um, it's not that ugly yellow color it used to be. You can pigment it. I mean, how it looks <laughs> does matter. It does. <laughs> to some extent, I think. But it's about 30% lighter than a traditional socket. Yeah. For below the knee. I definitely yeah. felt that. I mean, like, there was a very clear difference in mm -hmm. the weight of this leg versus the other ones that I've had. Yeah. And it uh, fits clothing really well. Yeah, that the... actually is another thing. For mm -hmm. real, it's easier to get like pants on. Yeah. <laughs> like... And another cool thing, we can switch from like a pin lock to suction or vice versa in the same socket. 
It's just a matter of oh. unbolting some hardware. So if you wanted to try a pin lock or suction, weren't sure about it, uh, we're really uh, able to, to go either way or even seal in later. So. That seems like a really good option, especially maybe for newer amputees. Is it a good idea for, for newer Yeah, amputees? or somebody who's on the fence. Like, yeah. Because the way I look at suspension methods, a lot of times it's, it's a lifestyle thing. Yeah, if you're going to okay. be taking your leg off. Who would direct socket not be a great option um, for? So it can work with new amputees, but yeah. brand new amputees can be like real bulbous. Yeah. And we wouldn't want to get it stuck like during the process. Yeah, that makes um, sense. And but you know it, it could work. Uh, we're, we have some ideas. One thing that I, I wondered about going into the, this option was like, okay, I was seven weeks out from amputation, and it's kind of like a final leg almost right away. Mm -hmm. Is that, does that commonly become an issue or because it's so fit to you, is that yeah, really not volume, a problem? Yeah, so volume fluctuation is a thing that we can't really solve with, you know, static technology. Yeah, um, yeah, right. If, if I anticipate that, okay, you're just going into your first leg yeah. and you're going to be changing a lot, we would consider this a diagnostic socket. Got it, okay. And do it again two, three weeks later when the volume's smaller use socks and pads yeah. up to that point okay. and then call that the definitive. Okay, so there's still wiggle room and options yeah. within that. But it's still a really, yeah, it's safer than going out on a check socket, yeah. which isn't intended for long term use. Yeah, that's always kind of freaked me out actually locking up. Weight rated uh, <laughs> 350 plus. Yeah. So they're really strong. So the, the weight restriction on drag sockets is 350 plus, is that right? Yeah, I can't remember the exact number. Yeah, okay, cool. It's material options. With yeah, them. okay. Um, so the material options would be uh, basalt, which is a volcanic which is material, what I have. and that's more environmentally friendly, from my understanding. Okay. Um, then, like either fiberglass, carbon fiber. Um, the look is a little bit different. I personally like the basalt. It's kind of got a thicker, like weaved. It's yeah, like the, it looks like, like snakeskin. Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing. It does. It looks like snakeskin. Yeah. You know, from my standpoint, working on the basalt is less itchy because when we oh. grind the fiberglass and the Carbon, it, it, little speckles get on your skin. I never and it's thought really about itchy. I never thought about the poor prosthetist who had to deal with that <laughs> in the back. <laughs> so not only is it more environmentally friendly, it's more it's prosthetist more, friendly. <laughs> yeah. What about colors? What about you can't do fabric with these yet, can you? You can. I okay. haven't done it yet, but okay. apparently we could get like a Fred's legs, uh, spandex kind of thing oh, to sure. go over. Okay. And a lot of different patterns. Um, as our last layer and it just gets laminated in about any color that you want. Okay. We have little dyes that we put in. And I also want to try embossing powder at some point. Uh, oh. To make it sparkly. I would totally be a guinea pig for that. Okay. Like, <laughs> that's well, awesome. You know. If someone was comparing the pros and the cons of direct socket versus fill in the blank, what mm -hmm. are some considerations that they should keep in mind? Uh, the pros of it would be lightweight. Okay. It's taken some of the human error out of the process because right. it's a step-by-step -step procedure that can be duplicated. And it's actually uh, on you. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't take away the skill of the process. Sure. Because there's a lot of subtle decisions like we can put pads on bony prominences. Yes. Uh, in order to create relief. So that's done under the casting liner, but then the pads removed to create a relief. Which is what you did for me, which worked really well because it, it gave it space. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So without that, you'd probably be in a lot more pain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the skill of the process still is there to determine that. But as far as the, <clears throat> the, the fit of the socket, the volume fit, um, that's the thing that's taken some of the air out. We, Got it. to date, really have not had to do any modification to the inside of the sockets. Really? Um, what we're adjusting is trim lines. Okay. That's And now that we're... Simple more familiar with how we're, we're having to do that. We've added some pads that we're putting on the patella, in the back, behind the knee. Back to your question on yeah. the, uh, like who it's indicated for. Yes, I'd say some congenital, uh, like Symes amputee, who yeah. has a real bulbous distal end and is narrower. Um, they wouldn't be a candidate because okay. again, it would get stuck and uh, it wouldn't be able to Sounds like fit a through. Bad day. Yeah. <laughs> Direct socket for sports. It seems to me like it's a fantastic option. Yep. Are there any considerations when it comes to being um, extra active? No, not really. It's cool. They're weight rated pretty high. I think it's actually yeah. 365. The way I look at it, 
I'm I'm doing direct socket unless there's a reason not to. Cool. Okay. Um, it's really changed our practice. We have a, a room dedicated to, to direct socket. We have all the liners in stock, everything we need. And right there in a chair. super comfy, expensive <laughs> chair <Yes. laughs> um, that moves the person all in every uh, position imaginable just so yeah. that we have the right work environment to do our best work. <laughs> Makes so much sense. You know, kids to take off school and their parents to take off work to bring them in. Yeah. If we can get everything knocked out in one appointment, it's better for everyone. It seems like there's a lot of variance across the country and the world when it comes to how this process goes. Because as I've kind of documented my process, people are like, wait, you're doing this already or you haven't already? I mean, it's just, I mean, that's how the internet works to some extent, mm -hmm. but everyone's experience is so different. And one thing that people have expressed some kind of frustration with is how long the process can take. Yeah. And I totally get that because yeah. when you are lacking mobility and it's kind of within reach, mm -hmm. you, you want it as soon as possible. And it seems like this is a really cool option to get people there a lot faster, especially with like insurance approving appointments or it depending is, on yeah. who you're working with, it can be one and done to some extent. Yeah, and I've been doing this for 20 years, so yeah. I take a lot of pride in my, my hand skills or yeah. being able to take a cast and modify it and know it's going to fit. Yeah. But when I can make those fits even better with a new tool, it's kind of like backing up in a car when you have a rear view camera. Yes. It's like, well, like, wow, you see so much more of what's behind you than yeah. looking in your mirrors and turning your head around. Even if you're great at backing up. This is a, <laughs> this is a, a tool that's going to help me yeah. make better sockets and uh, get better outcomes. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. Get more comfortable sockets. I was really excited to get the chance to sit down with Noah, who is an above knee amputee, to talk about his experience with a drag socket, as being an above knee amputee is going to be totally different than being a below knee amputee. So, how does it work for above knee amputees? I'm here with my brand new friend, Noah, who is a fellow amputee who snowboards, which I definitely need to get into because I live in Colorado and I've never snowboarded in my life. Yeah, but you gotta go. Yeah, seriously. You gotta go. You're pretty, pretty good at it from what I understand. I, I love it. It's so much fun, and, and yeah. You know, I'm an above the amputee. I lost my leg uh, four years ago. I decided to amputate it after I was going through chemo and, and cancer. Yeah. But I've had many different sockets. I've had everything from like skin fit to liners and Velcro to suction. And I've had all those different kinds of suspensions, but out of all of them, the direct socket is really like something that fits better for me. Awesome. And okay. it's more comfortable because I've had an issue in the past where like when I start to do sports or activities or something, my leg can't really flex. And oh, right. yeah. all that carbon is just yeah. like being tight on my muscles. But with the, the new direct socket, like it's the seal of it gives my, my muscle space to flex. I wouldn't even think of that. That's yeah. actually really kind of... That's really cool. Yeah, it's super sweet. Yeah, it's that's rad. awesome. It's rad, for sure. <laughs> How yeah. is it for, um, like, if someone isn't super athletic? Because I know yeah. people who watch are kind of across yeah, the spectrum. For sure. For just general walking. How yeah. do you like it? General walking, I really love it. Mm -hmm. um, because of the, the type of fit it is, it's sub-visual. Yeah. So it doesn't go all the way up to, like, your butt cheek, which is, like, yeah. another thing I don't like. Seems like it'd be really uncomfortable. It's very yeah. uncomfortable. You're like walking, you're like, dude, Come on. what? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, Stop cool. touching my butt. Yeah, like, like, dang, dude. Yeah, like, who's touching me? But um, it ends up working really well because it's more comfortable. You don't get, like, any rubbing, and it's not, like, yeah. on your butt cheek the whole day. And for walking, it's just, yeah, it's just more comfortable. One thing it does take, though, is because it's not as high up, yeah. you do have to have a little bit more of strength in your leg. Um, That's good to know. Yeah, okay. because you want to have that stability, and that's what that... The higher socket that has gives you the stability. Yeah. Um, so with a cut a little lower, you definitely have to work a little harder to walk. Okay. Um, but it's totally worth it, and the muscles are there for a reason. So why not use them? Yeah. Seriously. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Are there any other? Um, I don't want to say downsides, but precautions or things to to keep in mind if someone was a an AK considering a direct socket? Yeah, I would just say you know look what's out there and yeah. see what's going to work best for you. I don't want to persuade you one way or the other, but yeah. for me, I found that it really really works well. Cool. And I really love it, um, but but definitely check into all your options. Like, there's so many different systems out there, but I personally love the direct fit, and it's I mean, it's sweet. Yeah, it's cool. It's done in like 45 minutes, yeah. and you're good. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, it's super <laughs> sweet. I hope you guys are all doing well. Keep walking, keep killing it, and uh, follow me on Instagram, Elliot underscore Cindy, and uh, be sure to watch some snowboarding. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's sweet. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm with Creative Technology Prosthetics in Denver. We have three Denver locations. I have been doing prosthetics for about 20 years. 
So why do you do what you do, Zach? Uh, <laughs> I do it uh, for awesome patients like you that uh, <laughs> are able to take stuff that I build and do awesome things with. I'm so glad that Zach and Noah agreed to chat with me today. Now to head back to the springs in rush hour traffic. I really hope this video answered some of your questions about direct sockets. Let me know if it did. Let me know if you guys have any additional questions down below. Thank you so much to Creative Solutions for allowing me to come film there and chat with Zach today. You guys all rock and I really appreciate you being a part of this. I love you guys, I'm thinking of you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Have her from the sky.